In today's video, I'm gonna show you my full professional photography workflow using the new iPad mini. Okay, so let's start out and actually get some photos on this thing. I've got a memory card with some photos and I've got a uh, USB-C SD card reader. So it goes without saying, we put this in its slot. Now I'm gonna be using this on this little stand, largely just to help me film. Um, but the great thing about this uh, size iPad is that it's so easy just to hold, it's so easy to throw in a bag. Now I've shown videos when I've used um, uh, my much larger iPad Pro, the new M1 version for photo editing. And that does give you so much screen real estate to see all of your photos and to do all of those complicated edits. But if you're working on location and you really wanna travel light, something this size is brilliant. And you absolutely can do some superb edits on something this size. I mean, I actually use my phone for a lot of my editing. That's a much smaller screen, so this is great. Lightroom wants to access the storage. Okay, we can let it do that. And then we're gonna go device connected, continue, and that will bring up the, um, uh, the import dialogue. And I've done a lot of photos on this recently. Um, but it was a bunch that I took at night the other day, and I, that is these ones right here. So what I'm gonna do is I was gonna click all of 28th of September, 2021, because I think that's everything that I did at night. Oh, I did some random photos of the microphone. Get rid of that. Okay, the import process is really important um, in terms of organizing your photos. When you're not on a desktop and you don't have all your own file systems, trying to keep everything in order is really important, particularly when you want to come back and find these photos later on. So what I'm going to do is click up here, add to all photos, and I'm going to go uh, to new album. And I'm going to call this uh, night time sep 21. Okay. I'm gonna to import to that photo. It's pretty quick. Copy and complete, it is quick. Um, on When I've um, done uh, the video with the iPad M1, I talked about how powerful that is, and that is important, but really these um, this uh, iPad has got more than enough power for editing um, in Lightroom. It's a very, very efficient bit of software, um, and even working with full-size raw photos from my Canon 5D4, this thing absolutely has no problem um, in managing that. 50 photos are imported. Now, on the side, let's put this in portrait orientation now because that is when I'm just quickly looking through photos it's a really nice way of looking at it because you see all your albums down here on the left makes it very easy to just quickly look through those and then you see your camera roll on the right so in this instance we put it in nighttime September 21 great here we are and you can see all of those photos there not all of them are very good in fact None of them are very good, and that's why I'm doing a, vi a video about arranging these photos, not about taking them. Uh, anyway, um, we can ignore that. Now, the way that I sh have shown before in terms of organizing those photos involved using the iPad with a keyboard. Now, for this, I don't have a keyboard. Apple doesn't do an official keyboard with it. I'm sure there are third-party alternatives, but I don't have one. So I'm going to go into this photo, first of all, and what I want to do is make sure that I'm getting rid of the photos that I don't want, leaving only the ones that I do want to edit. I don't want to have every single photo I've taken in my camera roll, otherwise it will just get too convoluted, it will be taking up too much space, and too difficult to go back later on and find the ones that I want. Lightroom, for me, is a really great bit of mobile software so I want it to be as efficient as possible when I'm actually out working on location. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm on the star down here, that that is selected. This basically is how you would rate your photo. You can give it a star rating or you can flag it as, excuse me, you can flag it as a pick or as a not pick, flag, flag for deleting. And that is what we're going to be doing. Now, Lightroom does have a very, very ingenious way of letting you do this nice and quickly. Um, if you just swipe up, or down on the right of the screen, then you can flag it as a pick or you can flag it as rejected. That makes it very quick to just go through and go, yeah, I wanna keep that. Or this one, um, you know, swipe across, no, I'm gonna get rid of this one. And you can go and just do it that way. Very quick, swipe, swipe down, it flags it as rejected. And I'll show you why that is important. So I'm gonna start back at the beginning because this one, yeah, I wanna get rid of. This one I wanna keep, and for me, the way I like to work, the way that I work when I'm actually doing this professionally is that I will just keep 
photos that I think are good or might be good, and any ones that I know definitely I don't want, I reject those. So I'm only really getting rid of the ones that really haven't worked. So I'm not trying to cull everything back to just two or three photos. I'm still keeping maybe 10, 15, 20 or so, um, just in case I wanna go back and use those later. Um, this one, uh, no, let's just say get rid of that and then we swipe up. And actually this one with a different white balance I do like, so I'm gonna keep that as a, um, uh, as neutral, as no flag. This one, I tried to get a slow shutter bit of car going through, didn't really work, so I'm gonna get rid of that as well. This one, I do like, we'll keep that. This one, far too dark. And we could just go through very quickly like this. Maybe these ones might work. No, no, we just go through. As you can see, actually, yeah, I do like that one. These, absolutely no. Uh, maybe, yeah, not that one, not that one. Oh yeah, maybe this one looks kind of cool. And um, yeah, so you can see it's just, it's a swipe and it's a swipe. Next photo, swipe down if I don't like it, leave it as it is if I do. It's a very, very quick way of going through. Um, you know what, I do like this one. Actually, I'm gonna go back, get rid of that one and keep this one. So it is easy to go and correct. You just swipe back up to remove that rejected flag. So let's just go through the rest of these pretty quickly. Don't want these, don't want that. Nope, nope, nope. Definitely no. Some of these just haven't worked at all. Absolutely no, 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 no. Yeah, I quite like that one. Or that one, uh, the first one. Yeah, I quite like that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And keep that one for safety. Nope, that's a bit empty. Ah, oh, this is when I decided to get in the frame. Yeah, I like this one. Okay, that's now all of those photos have been rated using my star system. The great thing is if I now go back into that album and you can see that a lot of these have been kind of grayed out slightly as photos that I do not want to keep. The great thing is if we just click the little uh, filter icon at the top and you can filter by um, by star rating, by type, camera, blah, 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 or you can filter to see your flagged images. And that is what we're going to do. If I click to only see the ones that I flagged to get rid of, what we can do now is just go in and select and then we can go to, uh, can we select all? Is that possible? You know what? Maybe it's not, fine. Uh, an easier way then, you know what? Oh, you can, you can just click that. Done, select all, very easy, and then press remove. And that will just remove, delete, delete, all of those photos which we had flagged as ones that we didn't want to keep. So you don't need a keyboard, you don't need a mouse, it doesn't need to be desktop, you don't need to go through one by one, it makes it very difficult to do it one by one, but by using the flag tool just like that, that swipe and swipe and then deleting them all is a very, very quick way of going through and making sure that you've now only got the actual photos that you want. So that's great. So now, as you can see, we have only got those photos that we thought might work. Let's start on this one then. And when I'm editing, that is when I turn it back into a landscape view because then you get your photo and then you can see all of your um, uh, settings, all of your sliders on the right. It makes it a much easier way of working. If we did that in portrait mode, that image becomes very, very tiny and um, difficult to see. Don't want that. So there we go. We keep it in that view. And for this, I think what I want to do actually is all of these are going to work really well as black and white. I went out wanting to do these kind of noir style moody black and white images and I'm going to use profiles for that and there are profiles in Lightroom also I've got my presets in here because they sync across all versions of Lightroom when I've uh, when I've imported them so I do have those but for black and white the standard black and white profiles that you can get are superb I always use those for black and white so open black and white and usually just like black and white one already We've got this really moody noir style shot, a little bit more brightness and contrast with black and white too. You know what, I love that. I don't really think there's much more I wanna do on top. So I'm gonna go with black and white too. Go back, maybe tone down those highlights a little bit, maybe slightly lift those shadows. Not too much, otherwise we'll start to lose that kind of cool noir look that we were going for. And of course, you can use all of the um, selective edits. We can use our, I know how to use the radial filter. We drag it up like this. So we can pop that here over this figure. It's actually me, I used a timer because I wanted to have a nice figure in the frame. I wanna feather that. And let's just up that exposure, just kind of help that 
um, help that shadow on the ground here pop out a little bit more. And you can drag this effect around really nicely. Maybe up those whites a bit too. Spot on. Okay, look, look at our before and our after. It's looking pretty good. It is looking pretty good. Okay, let's do another, this time a brush. And I'm gonna use the brush tool on this building front here. I'm just gonna paint it in like that first. Then we're gonna to go to whites, up those whites. Mm, start a lot on highlights, up the exposure a little bit. I just wanna get a bit more light on the top of the building. It had fallen to shadow quite a bit. And I'm gonna press done. Now the other last thing I'm gonna do in this black and white is add a bit of clarity because look at that. Usually in landscapes and things, I don't like using the clarity much, but for black and white, particularly nighttime black and white like this, I think a little bit of that crunch that you get from clarity looks beautiful. I've actually gone plus 26 on that. I really, really like how that works. Now, of course, I'm working on location, theoretically, with this little iPad. Maybe I'm in the back of a car on the way back from a shoot. Maybe I'm just, a, it's a pause between shots and I'm just kind of, seeing what I can get. So I want to work quickly. So in this instance, what I'm going to do, I'm going to press these three buttons at the top right, copy settings. This will give me the option to copy either everything that I've done at all, or just most of the things you can pick and choose. In this instance, I don't want to select tools because that will include some of those radial filters and the brush that I've done. And that isn't going to be applicable to every photo. What I want is the styles. I want the main, the global edits to copy. And those are selected light, color, effects, detail, done. So we can press the tick button. That's great. And now we can go back to, let's say this one, and we can do those three dots again, paste settings. Suddenly, there we go, the exact same settings have been applied to this one. Maybe it's a little bit much, we can bring down those highlights a little bit because it's a little bit too overpoweringly bright. Um, we could then add in maybe a linear filter. Oops, not like that. Up from the bottom, oh, I see what it's done. Something like this, and just darken it down a little bit. Something like that, I think looks really, really great. And then we could go, Back to one of these. Oh, look at this. Yeah, with these with these light trails from the bus. Pace settings. Straight away, we've got some great settings in there. You know, you'll need to maybe play around and tweak them. It's obviously too bright for this. We bring those highlights down. Maybe we bring those shadows down a little bit, and we can just bring that exposure down a touch. For this, I think maybe we'd want to add a radial filter on this bit of house. Let's feather it out add in some extra exposure here because it's kind of fallen into shadow a little bit too much. So I think just adding that filter is bringing it back into the scene a little bit more. Something like this. I think that's already looking pretty good. What about a little bit of dehaze? Just a touch, just plus 12, I think looks really good. And just with a few taps on the screen, we've created this really moody scene and it's taken hardly any time at all. It's currently, I've been filming for 13 minutes and I've already done most of the edits that I want to do. It's really, really quick. Now, I do over, over here have an Apple Pencil and often when I've done these videos, people have said, oh, you need to use an Apple Pencil, how can you not? And that's fine, I get it. But for me, the joy of having something that's a bit smaller is that you can just sort of hold it in two hands and you can swipe around and you can use the sliders all you want. And because the sliders are a little bit smaller, I actually find that trying to kind of get in and tap, I mean, it's not even synced right now. I don't think it's got any power, but, you know, trying to tap on these little sliders and do it, I don't have the same accuracy that I do with just moving my thumb or moving my index finger. So I just find that actually these things kind of slow me down. If I'm doing a lot of kind of painting in of different colors or light, I'm dodging and burning, these are great, but otherwise I'm much quicker without it. So that is why I don't use it. And fine, yeah, I just need to keep a cleaning cloth handy give the screen a little polish every so often, and then we're good to go. Let's do one more. Let's do, um, let's do this nice scene here. Actually, let's not. Let's do this one. I think this is pretty cool. Uh, so what we're going to do, back into our edits. I'm going to go paste settings. Look at that. Straight away, we've got everything in there that we want. Bring down those highlights. I'm going to do a crop. It's going to go four by five. It's going to look lovely. Straighten it up slightly. Something like this. I think, yeah, a little bit further down. There we go, something like that. I think that's looking great. What a nice sort of noir scene that we've got. I definitely want to darken up the bottom of the frame. 
something like this. And actually, I think what I'm also going to do is bring in a radial filter just around here, feather it out, and just bring that exposure down slightly. Because I think that um, street light was a little bit overpowering. I'm going to go back and actually grab those shadows and move those back down because they were. It's uh, brightening things up in the shadows a bit too much. And actually, with that kind of noir look, you want those shadows, you want that mood happening, and that looks really, really nice. And there we go. How long did that take? A few seconds, because we just copied those settings over. And now I've got a nice selection of images. You know, we can go through and do them all. You can select all and paste settings across all of your photos, and therefore you've got an even quicker thing. That's easy to do if we just go on um, select, uh, select all like that, and then paste uh, settings. It will go through that and every single photo will have those settings applied. That makes it even quicker because now, you know, done. Everyone has got those settings applied. And then we can just go back and apply those other settings. Let's obviously kind of reset it to, um, to how it was, but that is even quicker way of working. And I think for a lot of people, you might imagine that this is a little bit too small to do really good photo editing on, but trust me, it is not. I do a lot of my work on location just using my phone because it's there, it's what I've got, and everything syncs across devices. So if you are considering getting an iPad for photo editing and you're thinking, oh no, I've got to have one of the bigger ones, I can't, I can't save some money with a smaller iPad, not true at all. One of these will do the job really, really nicely. Well, that does bring me to an end. I really hope this video has been useful to seeing a few tricks that I would employ in order to speed up the editing process. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.